Cross-dressing has become a trend in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Some embracing who they are and speaking and changing the stigma is being an LGBTQ member. Why all that frown about this change? Because of political beliefs and religious beliefs. Some dare to face the traumas and challenge the law. Why some hide like chickens? Today we are on the quest to speak with one of the faces of the LGBTQ community who happens to be a transgender and asks her what she fits being a cross-dresser and her journey on the streets of Nigeria. Our community needs to re-strategize and one way for us to re-strategize is to individually, personally invest in ourselves. Chidi Ihen, openly known as Jay Bugatti, is one of Nigerian cross-dressers and makeup artists who became a social media sensation after trending on Leaders EKG's blog back in 2020. With his controversial pictures and statement, I was a boy, yes I know, now I am a girl, never address me as a he but as a she. Since then, has emerged as one of Nigerian faces of the LGBTQ community, together with James Brown and Bob Risky. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Jay? And how did you become Jay Bugatti that everybody knows and talk about? How did you become the sensation or one of the faces of cross-dressing in Nigeria? I'm Jay Bugatti. I'm a free person. I want to be with you. Free spirit. Oh, well, when did I actually start cross-dressing? I would say that should be 20, 20, 13 years at a younger age. That very day, I went out and I came back and I was like, let me try something different today. Do you understand? And then I put on this skirt. Actually, my elder sister's skirt and I put it on with a top. And I was like, okay, this fits on me. So before then, at my younger age, when I was still a kid, I used to wear my, 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 my mother's bra, tie a tie, and do most of those funny things. And they tried to stop me. My mother used to stop me though, but my father would be like, no, allow him, allow him to be free. So I got to 2013 that day, I took the pictures and then I posted it on social media. I, I, I didn't post it like I wanted to come out to be a public figure, you understand? And then the next day, in the morning, a few of my friends started calling me. My younger sister also called me. Like, have you seen yourself on the block? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no cue of what you're talking about. And she was like, go to Lena Cage's block, you're going to see yourself. And I popped in there. I saw myself, I was like, wow. I didn't see this coming. So ever since then, I've been on timeline. I go out there. Trust me, trust me. Yeah. You know, you said you didn't start the, you know, cross-dressing because you wanted to be famous, you wanted to trend. And we know you started it from a childhood response, but the response you got from your family, was that what you, ex you expected? Or was it a different response altogether? How did your family yeah. take, you know, seeing your pictures out there on the Insta or Linda E. Cage's blog and everything? How did they take it? Not that very day. My younger sister was cool with it. It's more like a 50 50 thing, yeah. My elder sister was cool, younger was cool, yeah. My elder brother, because I have two elder brothers, one was actually cool, the first one was not cool with it. Actually, not cool with it at all. So he came back home that day. He was like, What is your face doing on the block and dressed like this? And I'm like, I don't get where this is coming from. It's me, it's my life. Moreover, I didn't expect myself to be there. So whatever it is, it is. Don't shout to me a little now like, guy, let it be. My father came back. He saw it. He called me. He was like, are you cool with this? And he have actually been like this from childhood, but coming out there, are you cool with it? I never expected this. It's obvious now, I just take it. You know, mothers, my mother talked and talked and talked. But she was calling it the next day. 
that was like I said, more like 50-50. So they were cool with you coming out. Did it did it bring the you know the almighty question most people will ask? Are you gay? What's your sexuality? Do you like women? Did you have that conversation about your sexuality when your cross-dressing identity comes out? And just by the way, just for a dis disclaimer, some people could be cross-dressers and not be gay. You're getting. And some people just cross-dress for fun. So did you have that conversation with your parents? Well, several times, yeah. My mother always acted, it suddenly became a song. Are you gay or you just doing this for porn or this or that? I said, Ma, I wouldn't lie to you. It is what it is. I'm gay, yeah? I told my father as well. My siblings, I never need to, I didn't need to tell them. They knew already. You get. They knew already. It was my father and my mother. My mother was not cool with it. My mother was like, you could dress like this, but being there's no, 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 it's not feasible. My father was like, you go above 18, do whatever you want to do. You know good, you know that. It's your choice. That was just it. And now, being a cross-dresser, so many people have told you how they feel about cross-dressing. But to you, how do you feel about cross-dressing? What's, what's your purpose? Like I said earlier, I just did it as of that day. I did it when Linda posted it. You get. But after that day, I loved it. I loved it really. So when you say you're gradually transiting, like you know, most people who start cross dressing before you know they become a transgender. Do you think you're still in that phase where you think maybe one day you would like to transition from your gender? Well, like I always tell my mother on the phone when we talk, because she once asked me this question. You started the first step, are you going to enter the second step? And I was like, oh, Mom, I'd rather be a cross dresser. I wanted to ask you, like with the whole cross dressing thing and childhood and your family and, you know, all that we've talked about, like when you walk on the street of Nigeria, which is the main question, how do you feel? Do you feel you're safe? Do you feel you're attacked? How do you cross dress? When and where do you cross dress? I always tell myself, it's my life. It's no one's life. I cross dress to anywhere I want to go to. Like, girl, you got God. I cross dress to the club. Even when I was in that university, I crossed to school. Anywhere I want to go to. Most times, to my father's office. Like on the street, you boldly cross dress on the street and you go anywhere you want to go to. Trust me, and a lot of people, that's why, that's why to today, a lot of people will be like, hm, I envy you because you got caught. I cross dress to anywhere I want to go to, even to the airport. Well, we've, we've been seeing videos circulating from Nigeria, like the one we told a long time ago of a crossdresser who was trying to take an Okada bike to go somewhere and this person was literally harassed. See where the problem comes from. It's where the problem comes from. I don't do Okada to get. I don't do bike. If I'm not driving today, I'm going with a, probably an Uber from my house to the Uber car to where I'm going to. Probably I might be going to the airport. Drop me at the airport to come down. Okay. That's just it. When I was a student, if, it, if I actually don't want to use a car, I stop at the school grade and I walk. The school bus down to my department. People see me. Most times I take it like, it, it, it depends on your facial experience. You get your mood. You look at people, they see that fear in you. They want to come to you. That's just it. No, actually, like what you just said, I've seen a lot of people being beat up. I've actually saved one person. I and my friends and my elder brother was actually there. Not the first one, the second one. It was me as well. That was the market. Someone was actually harassed to a point that he was slapped. Why? Why your makeup? 
And I'm like, guy, this is this person's life. You see this as a sin. Your sin might be worse than this. So allow this person. Oh, you're one of them. I say, yes, I'm one of them. What can you do about it? If you got girls, touch me. That's just it. That was how I saved the guy in that day. Most times I tell people, if you know you're scared, don't go to most places. There are most places you don't go to. For example, now, one can just cross dress and you go to a go to. Like, it's work, you'll get beaten, you might even get killed or burnt. That's to say, you're going to look for trouble. You know, there we have this most humans who they bring and not complete. You dress up, you go there. What are you going there to do? There are most places you don't dress up to. Like me, most times, if I'm going to most places, not like I'm scared, I just want to go with this bodyguard. Not like I'm actually scared. That's it. You see, for so for people like you, you have the you have the luxury to own a bodyguard. But for most common, you know, people who are just starting life, who feel I want to express myself, and everybody has a right. Everybody has a right to express themselves. But unfortunately, Nigeria is a place where your rights are reduced to something. For such people who don't have this luxury, who don't have this privilege to afford a security guard, a bodyguard, what have you done? Or what do you think should be done to help guide them? That's exactly what I was trying to explain to you. I already said earlier, like the guy I saved that day. And I keep telling most of them who can actually afford this bodyguard. Mind the kind of places you go to. Mind the kind of people you move it. Because most friends, you set most friends up. Do you get? Mind the kind of people you you, you, you should shoot with. Mind the kind of places you go to. Mind the kind of places you go to. You cross dress. That is just it. You know you're not safe. And you don't have these hands. Be careful. That's it. What about, what about speaking out for these people? What about calling on NGOs? What about making a campaign? What about t- tutoring these people on how to cross dress, where to cross dress? Because genuinely, maybe they are just young stars who are coming up. They don't know those places are dangerous. They don't have nobody to guide them. Over in America, in Canada, we do have houses and we do have godmothers. Like, for example, once you're on the street, a house father or a house mother can pick you up and say, you know, I like your vibes. I like everything about you. I feel you should be my daughter. I'm going to coach you on how to be a cross-dresser because, like, nobody just wake up one morning and say, okay, this is foundation, this is this, boom, and cross-dressing like that. Cross-dressing has its principles. So, how do young people reach out or get mentors in Nigeria? Just a hope for survival. Well, I would like to you. The NGOs in Nigeria here are really fucked up in this thing. They're really fucked up. Most of them don't know what you're doing. Most of them don't actually protect these people. Do you get? Most of them just after the money they get from the from the US from the funds. 